Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to finally be sitting in front of a camera to do another kind of main video with all of you. If you are brand new to this channel, hello and welcome. My name is Bridget Spackman. I am a multi-age teacher in Pennsylvania, meaning I teach three different grade levels. I teach fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. I taught kindergarten for four years in Alabama and I am just really happy to be in front of the camera again. <laughs> So I want you guys to think about that teacher in your school that you have almost that teacher envy of. It is that teacher who always has everything together. They have their copies made. They put their grades in way before everyone else. Uh, they have report cards finished. Their conferences are undone. They have the email sent out to parents. You are just kind of blown away by, th by this teacher and the fact that they are able to accomplish so much in what seems like such little time. So today in this video, I wanna share with you five tips that I believe will help you to become that teacher in your school, that teacher that is able to get things accomplished, that stays on top of their tasks, and is able to leave early and not be stressed out about school 24 seven. All right, so let's jump into the five strategies that I believe will really help you in getting things done. So the very first strategy that I have for you is to create a task list. I am a huge fan of David Allen and his book, Getting Things Done. And in this book, he talks a lot about creating a to-do list, which I call a task list. And with this task list, the idea is to be able to get everything out of your brain. A lot of people call this a brain dump. This is everything from you needing to drop off things at Salvation Army, you need to take out the garbage, you need to, um, I don't know, go buy new pants for your kids, you need to make these copies, you need to send an email, you need to make a phone call to parents. Anything and everything that you have kind of stored in your brain that you're saying, well, I'm gonna remember to do that. It's just, I don't need to write that down. It's gonna take me one minute to get that done you need to put it out onto paper because what you're doing is you're storing all this information in your brain and you will end up forgetting, but then your brain also starts to kind of think about all these different things all at one time, which almost causes that stress piece, you know? So put it down on paper, get it all out, brain dump it, put it on paper every, sing every time you think of something, put it down on paper in a task list. This allows you to be able to focus on things that are more important, whether it be that you really need to pay attention during this meeting to be able to get all of the information in. It could also be that you just really wanna get a good night's sleep. How many of you have ever sat in bed and you're thinking about all of the 101 things that you need to get done for tomorrow before the kids even arrive into the classroom? Create a task list, write everything down, and get it all out. Once you've created this task list, the next important thing is to go through and figure out and ask yourself, is this something that can take two minutes or less? If it is something that takes two minutes or less, do it. Don't wait, don't say, oh, well, I'll just I'll just do it in a little bit. No, stop doing that to yourself. And make that phone call, like send that email, sign that piece of paper that needs to be signed, write that check that needs to go to your son's um, school for his lunch account, get it done. If it takes two minutes or less, just get it over with. Now, if it doesn't take two minutes or less, and it's going to take you more time, leave it onto your task list. Once you start kind of going through your calendar and creating your plan, which we'll get to in a little bit, then you can start looking back at your task list to determine what is it that you can go ahead and get done within the certain amount of time that you have available to be able to kind of check things off of your list. The good thing is, is it's not stored in your brain. You're not gonna forget it. You're not gonna constantly keep thinking about it because you do have it stored onto this main task list that you keep everything in. And I know what some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get so overwhelmed with having like 50 or 60 things on this task list. You'd be surprised how much you were able to get things done on that very first go of fi figuring out how much of it actually takes two minutes or less. Once you're able to kind of weed through all of the tasks that take two minutes or less, it really kind of makes it so much smaller. And once you start to kind of plan out your days and figure out what it is that you can get done, you're gonna be able to get a lot of those things accomplished. Tip number two is to create a project list. Now this is different from your task list. To help clarify on the difference between a task and a project, 
A task is something that you can do it. It only takes one step to do and then it's done. You like, for instance, uh, sending out an email or making a copy of something or laminating some papers that need to be laminated. Um, those are simple. Once you do it, it only takes one step and then it's finished. A project has way more than just one task. It takes multiple different steps. I used this a lot in kindergarten when I did lots of parties. So examples, I know a lot of you are getting ready for the 100th day of school or you're getting ready for Valentine's Day. And those would be a great idea for project lists because I know for like Valentine's Day, oh, well, we need to make our bags. We need to make our hats. We need to have our Valentine's. Um, we need to make sure I send out a sign-up genius for food for parents. I need to send home letters um, for them. Like there are so many little bitty things that you have to get done for this big party. Um, a project list is absolutely perfect for it. So every time I kept thinking of, hey, I have this part, you know, Mother's Day is coming up or, you know, Easter is coming up, I would sit down and kind of plan out what are all of the things that I want to be able to accomplish for this one day. And I would start to kind of pick and choose things that had to get done immediately that needed to get sent out, whether it be a letter, an email, sign up genius or something to parents, and then things that kind of could be done, you know, two or three days before the actual date of the party. So create a project list for any of those events that you do have projects, because it, again, it takes out all of that information in your brain. It puts it down on paper so you're not constantly thinking about it. And you would be surprised at how when you do put it on paper, you're really able to kind of think through every single little detail. So if you were to kind of try to just keep it in your brain, I promise you, you would forget something and you'd be like, oh, I wish I would have done that or I wish I would have thought about that. Taking the five minutes to kind of sit down and truly plan it out and kind of think everything through that you wanna be able to accomplish on that date will make such a huge, huge difference for you. Strategy number three is to create a top three list. For yourself every day. This is something to help you stay a little bit more focused. Again, if you were to look at all those tasks, you would almost feel very overwhelmed. So here is what I propose to you. I say that if you don't have any projects going on for that date, go through, look at your tasks and think about what are the three most important tasks that I need to accomplish today. This is one of those things that if I was to get nothing else accomplished for the entire day, if I did these three things, I would feel really, really good about myself. Now, if you do end up having some projects and you have a task list, I would think about one project that you wanna tackle for the week. So what I do is I say, hey, this is the one project that I know for a fact that I really wanna make sure that I kind of get accomplished whether it be like for the 100th day of school or your project-based learning piece that you're trying to launch, or if you're you know, wanting to um, do a presentation for, I don't know, you're a meeting or something to that extent, and so you're preparing for this presentation, pick a project that you wanna focus on for the week, and then every single day, add one of those tasks to your three, your top three task list for that day. Um, you can pick from your task sheet, you can pick from your project list, but three things that you say, I absolutely need to get these three things done. Now here's where the really great part is, because if those three things end up not taking as long as what you thought they were initially going to take, then when you, if you were to sit down and say, hey, I have like a 30 minute break, what can I do during this 30 minute break? Don't sit and scroll through Instagram or Facebook. Do something. <laughs> it'll, make, it'll make you feel so much better. I promise you that. So during that 30 minute break, when you have already accomplished your top three, take out your task list or your project list and see what other items that you are able to kind of get accomplished within that 30 minutes. Maybe there is something that you can get done within that 30 minutes and cross that off of your list. The beauty is the top three doesn't really hinder you from what completing more. It just keeps you more focused in making sure that you complete the three items that are kind of your priority items. Everything else is kind of bonus extra. If you're able to get it done, you're able to get it done. Kudos to you. And if not, at least you got the top three things that you needed to get done, done. Tip number four for you is to create a one-stop shop. Now, this is truly just my opinion. So if you are someone who has kind of more than one planner, more than one notebook, and it works for you, kudos to you. I'm simply kind of giving my advice of something that I've noticed about myself over the years. I am not a person who does well if they had like 
a notebook for this and a notebook for that. And this is gonna be my project notebook and this is gonna be my task notebook. This is gonna be my calendar. And uh, these are gonna hold all of my things for YouTube and all of my things for my home life. If I had way too many things that I'm kind of thinking of, I would get overwhelmed and I just would forget them. Let's just be honest. Like I'm gonna end up being at school and I'm gonna say, oh, Darn it, I left that notebook at home. Now what am I gonna do? I can't look at anything. So I created a one-stop shop using a Kiki K A5 planner. Um, it has my calendar, has notebook pages, and some tabbed areas for me to be able to organize things. So I have a section for YouTube. I have a section for me to be able to have my task lists and to have my project lists so I can always refer back to it when I get a chance. Uh, so create a one-stop shop. Now, if you're already kind of using a system that works for you, kudos. Uh, some ideas of some really great systems could be an A5 binder. It could just be a regular binder if you like to carry around a regular binder. Um, I've also tried a personal planner. I have also done bullet journaling. So if you're someone who kind of likes to have that journal piece of it and you can kind of create it on a day-to-day -day basis and just write things in. I've seen some really, really amazing, hardworking people who that has worked absolute wonders for. The most important thing is that you find a system that truly works for you. So considering your handwriting, are you someone who, like me, if I was to do a bullet journal, I would be a little bit stressed out at the fact that like if something isn't written in perfectly or if I ended up spilling something on it and I can't kind of tear it out and rewrite it. So an A5 planner works in for me and for kind of my quirkiness. <laughs> you have a space for you to be able to write it down. Even if it's a sticky note holder. Um, I know a lot of people who really like sticky notes, but if you keep all these sticky notes and they're in all different locations, you have them in the car, you have them at home, you have them in your bathroom, you have them in your workplace. Um, if you put all of those sticky notes and just stick them inside of a notebook or a folder, at least again, it's just one area for all of your belongings so you're not losing them um, and you're keeping all of those tasks in one spot. My very last tip for you, and I think it's like the most important tip out of everything, this is what's gonna either make you or break you, <laughs> is it to make it a habit to sit down for at least five minutes a day and say, I'm going to plan out my day. It takes, I believe, 28 days in order to create a habit. So create a habit. You have to be committed and you have to tell yourself, I'm going to sit down every single day, whether it be in the morning, first thing in the morning, right before you go to bed to plan out for the next day, you need to take five minutes to kind of think about your day and plan it out. I know that a lot of people say, well, I've tried planners before and they never really work for me. It's because you have to mix yourself and commit yourself to saying, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do it. It's like a diet, you know, how many times have you said, I'm gonna go on a diet, and then the next thing you know, you're eating chocolate? Same idea, you have to sit down with your planner and kind of plan things out and stay committed to it. Put a timer on your phone, say that you know every night at eight o'clock or when the first thing I, when I wake up, I'm gonna wake up 10 minutes early so that I will sit down and kind of pull out my planner and really spend a little bit of time just organizing my day so that I am a little bit more focused and I know exactly what my day is going to bring me. Those are my five strategies in order to help you get things done this year. I hope that you've really enjoyed these tips. I would love to know if you have some tips uh, that work really well for you that you can kind of share out with this community. So leave some comments down below. I would love to know what are some ideas and things that you're doing in your own day-to-day -day life that help you stay organized and get some things accomplished. If you enjoyed this video and you thought it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it out guys. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe so that you can get more tips and ideas of what you can do in and outside of the classroom. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Bye!